Hey, Greg, what's happening, man? Not much. It's been a while, at least a couple Ooh, hours since I've talked to you. A couple yet. hours since we talked. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So we were in Frankfurt. What's your feeling on Frankfurt? The whole lighting show over there. What Randy said about being the world, the world show. You know, do I don't you know. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see every manufacturer there. I didn't see a lot of the U.S. ones there. But also, I didn't see a lot of the show because it was so confusing. Different floors, mile apart in some of them. And all that walking around and trying to figure out where you were, and half the time you couldn't even tell you were at a lighting show. Yeah, and, and, and not only that, but you're getting on shuttle buses to shuttle yeah. you to the other the other place, and it's like, where are we going with this thing, man? I mean, I just wanted to come to a lighting show. I didn't want to come to a lighting universe. I mean, yeah, that's it, def what it was. It was impressive. I mean, to say the least, how, how much space it can take up and what where lighting is going is kind of an indication of that. Is it's uh. It's open to everything, you know, and, and, and you can kind of see it in different areas. I mean, you and I had a conversation with someone from a Poland, a Poland manu Polish manufacturer of lighting. And a Czech manufacturer. And, yeah, or that was it. Czech, not Polish, but Polish similar. too. Polish too. But um, right. we, had a, we, had a, we had a conversation with a Polish lighting manufacturer, a Czech lighting manufacturer. And then, but the whole thing with the, uh, with that show is like the scope of it is enormous, man. It's crazy. It is. Yeah. And then even those two manufacturers we talked to, the products are selling or our products we're selling, you know, and, and I've never even heard of these brands. And so everybody's getting into it. They're just making their own tweak to it. And I don't even know what it is half the time, if it's just a name slapped onto the fixture or if there's something really unique about their product, I can't always tell. I think, I think Philips, uh, signify or whatever spent millions on their booth. They had to. It was a, it was a whole hallway, or hall, or whatever you want to call it. It was yeah. a whole ballroom. It was huge. And then Lead Vance is like millions of dollars on that. And, and I, yep. I have no perception after leaving those booths of what they do now. No, <laughs> I think it's it's kind of showing what they're what they're looking at doing. But what they do, if you did, if you went in there and you didn't know, if you weren't in lighting, it would have probably taken a few hours to actually figure out what it was. Yeah, you wouldn't have known it was title. a lighting show, actually. If right. you'd have walked into the Signify booth and walked around, I don't know yeah. if you would have known it was about lighting. No. Yeah, it didn't feature the lights. It featured spaces and areas and what you know what lighting can do ultimately is what it was showing. But the only reason you know that is by knowing that we're actually at Light and Build or looking at the title on your card or on the, the brochure. How big a mistake do you think it is for for Phillips to switch to signify. I think it's a huge mistake to me. It's a huge mistake. I think they have to do it is what I understood. It was just naming rights. Um, and when you have to do it, you have to come up with a name that makes sense. And I guess they're, they're signifying or they're significant and lighting, whatever they want to <laughs> go with. I mean, yeah, it's, it's something that they've used that name and they've stood behind that name for so long that it surprises me they did it. But if they have to do it, that's another story. And that's kind of what I think is the case. I think the number one thing that's valuable about Philip Sylvania and GE is the name. It's the goodwill. It was. It was the number one thing. <laughs> what is it now? I don't know. I mean, if they come out with the right technologies and new products and things that are yeah, you stand sense, out in the crowd, buddy. How are you going to stand, stand out in the crowd? I know uh, they have. You know they have the history, but is the history going to matter? And that's something we've indicated and talked about on previous podcasts. Is, is the history of lighting going to matter in the future of lighting? And if it doesn't, your name brand doesn't matter because it's all new. Well, dude, are we, are we the ones that, so I'm, I'm, I'm <clears throat> I have some concerns about uh, the whole, you know, Ryan, uh, Dan Ryan was talking about the channel. Okay. Mm -hmm. The channel gets obliterated when the channel can't add value. Right. Yeah. So we were talking about in the last show, it took us about 30 minutes of me saying uh, all this stuff is crap to realize that it's not crap and that right. lighting can really be a fuel or, or can be the engine of innovation, can, be the, can, can encapsulate so many building systems into it. I mean, what, where, are, where are guys like lighting guys like me and you going to be in this whole game? We're going to have to stay on top of technology and, and, and see where it takes us. I don't know that we can predict at this point, but by doing some of the things we're doing, going to the shows, talking to the people on this podcast and 
and and doing that i think it's going to help us prepare for the future what we're actually going to do i don't know for sure i don't think the lighting manufacturers know a lot of it's speculation but it's it's something important that we all got to look at and understand and to your point on lighting everybody's needs lighting we've always said that you know and i think i don't see that going away anytime soon that you'll always need a light source to do an activity so i think lighting will always be there and, and it's a lot easier to implement some of these new technologies that come out into an existing source versus going into a building and saying all right we got to start all over and install all these gadgets or devices throughout and, and wire it from the beginning when you have the light there take advantage of that and use the light so i think i think what, to your point that there is going to be um it is a great field to be in still how it's going to look in the future we don't know yet well did you listen to mark lean's first podcast uh for yes on change light lumens as a service deal yep yeah first of all it's lux as a service that's right you corrected that <laughs> um but the uh, Virginia Hewitt, um, you're welcome to come on the show, Virginia, anytime you want. Uh, but she's not a lighting person. And then there was an, I, I was watching business, um, the BNN network. So the business news network in Canada. And there was a company advertising. I'm in my, I'm in the uh, sport lounge of my gym, you know, getting ready to play a game of squash. <laughs> and uh there's an advertisement on the on the business news network about financing and financial people who are you know basically going in saying not not lux as a service not lumens as a service not lighting as a service but everything in the building financed as a service and i think all bank, fixtures all i mean everything hvac refrigeration everything as a service and I think, you know, a lot of this stuff, as usual, is going to rely on the energy savings and the control of lighting to generate the paybacks on the energy side. But they did not, they were not lighting people in this commercial, man. They were uh, a finance company. So everything as a service means you're not going to own anything. You're just going to borrow everything, pay for it, use it for temporarily. And then when you don't need it, you get a new one upgraded and you just keep paying. People like ownership. They want ownership. I know I, I don't want to be in debt to something. I want to buy it and own it, and that's it. I think there's a there's a there's a there's a financial argument out there. So if you so you, you know when you're you're rent you you rent your space in Minneapolis, right? Yeah. I rent my space in Minneapolis. So you pay your rent and you have your t your your T and M. Do you have T and M? Is that what it's called? Um, uh, what is it? Uh, taxes and maintenance, whatever. Right. Sure. Yeah. Rolled in. So yeah. right. So I'm also a landlord. So if you can roll something in as an expense, um, you do it. If you're a landlord, it's like okay, sure. you know what? Hey, those are my light fixtures. There, they're not my light fixtures anymore. They belong to, um, you know, uh, ABC Financial Group, Acme Financial Group, and uh, they're covering me for all my legal liabilities in terms of light levels. And they're responsible for the warranties, the promises, promises, right? Yeah. And uh, they're also responsible for uh, maintaining this and supplying the replacement parts and everything else. I don't know if this can get past the high level, huge property management conglomerate and then get to places, the regional level where guys like you and me and other nailed members specialize like you specialize in people that are in minnesota you don't necessarily exactly. specialize in people that are north yeah. america wide yeah. and i don't know if they'll get to, i don't know if that argument can get to those people maybe it can yeah it, to me it's it's service and you're going to need to be able to provide that service to to back everything and to be able to provide the service you need people in those areas so I still think it's going to, we've heard the term that lighting is a regional business um, as a whole. Lighting supply, if you're just ordering supply, it's not necessarily, you can order that anywhere. But to actually service your lighting system, I think it's still going to be regional to some degree. And so you're going to need some people that have the lighting expertise and are in that market. Um, but I think well, the model- Who's paying you? See, that that's where it comes yeah. in. It's like, is the end user customer paying us now? 
or are we going to be commoditized and categorized by like so for example android the android operating system on 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 phones yep guess what it doesn't matter whether you have uh, asus or acer or htc or samsung you're running the uh android operating system on that thing it doesn't same thing with the um computers so microsoft took all the proper all the profits from the um uh, laptops and computers and Google's taking all the profits from the operating systems of, uh, of, uh, smartphones. And are these banker types going to try to take, pick our pockets? Cause I got a thing or two to say about that son. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th that's kind of what it seems like if, if it goes to that model, you're going to need that financial backing. Hey man, I mean, I'm not a banker. I don't have, right. I don't have millions in the bank to loan to people to, no. pay for all this lighting and then and then all of a sudden lease it so then what does iot and light, smart lighting versus dumb controls i've always talked about i can do whatever anybody talks about in terms of iot i can do it with dumb lighting controls is that should we be educating ourselves as to how these controls and these information should we be should we be figuring out how lighting controls can deliver information to our customers and how we can help them with that? Yeah, I think anytime you can get advancements and if lighting ah, blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 anytime you can, you know, is that going yeah. to be the value sell in this business? Not anytime you can figure out whether or not laser lights are going to work or versus <laughs> LED or whatever. No, right. no, no. I'm talking about the basis of the business being going from lumens or lux measure uh, delivered foot candles, whatever you want to say to information gathering, walking through the matrix like Neo with this Li-Fi stuff. When is it, uh, are, are lighting guys going to get pushed out as kind of, uh, with contractors as kind of a commodity thing in the whole game? I, you know, I don't know to tell you the truth, but I, I really don't think so. I think you're going to still need lighting specialists. In, in order to do this because I think it goes to that argument of quality of light does quality of light matter and I think it does I, I think all of us kind of agree that are in lighting because we know the differences between light sources and fixture manufacturers and things so as long as quality of light matters we will matter and I think, that's I, I, think I think that what they'll say is quality of light is a given can you if, add these if, other things sure they being uh the matrix the matrix people <laughs> can, can, can you give everybody can you put everybody in the matrix with the li-fi can you uh, kill the germs in the hotel room uh in the motel room hotel room hospital room can you kill all the germs that are there can you measure how many people have entered the space can you tell me where they're congregating can you provide me with um, a software system that my people can easily understand and manage with uh, I th this is where lighting is going. It's, it's going there. There's no stopping it. Everybody's already agreed. Signify yeah. signals. Signify. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah, know, man. That could, that could be where it ties in. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it, everything's going to have to. You're saying that everything's a commodity. All lighting is going to be the same and have the same capabilities. Has that ever been the case? I don't think so. <laughs> no. It hasn't, so I don't know if it. Why would why would it be in the future? There's always. I think some there's little... been people that have been talking crap for years, and and uh, there's always been. So are we talking about a niche niche or a niche market here of you know major? So there's maybe in Toronto, which is a huge city, for all you U.S. listeners out there. There's maybe 15 properties that could use some serious information from their lighting system, and the rest of them. They're going to stick with the uh, lighting distributors because they just don't need the information. Or is everybody going to want this information? Everyone. Depends what you can do with it. And until you know that, I, I think it's been proven, and we talked about in a previous podcast, that in a retail setting, that can matter because it can help you sell the product while the person's on site. Talking about the, the global positioning. Um, but as far as what other data, if it's just 
you know, movement into space. I think you can tailor your, or you can for sure tailor your systems around that, making sure you maximize your energy savings and energy, minimize your energy use. Um, I think that's the kind of data that you can really get out of it. And I think that would help make sense in the future for it. I listened to our podcast with Dan Ryan yeah. today and, um, not posted yet, not posted yet, but this yeah. will come up after or whatever. Right. And we were talking, I, I came up with that matrix thing and everybody's always like, Oh man, that's so crazy or whatever. I kind of think that's the real end game, dude that you shine lights on people and you don't need anything else. There's no other connectivity that you need other than the fact that there's shadows being created in the internet signal. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Uh, kinda, I don't know if I'm following it a hundred percent. Right, so let's say you're shining a light on somebody, you then mm -hmm. cast a shadow, right? Sure. So the light knows, the lighting system knows that you walked into space because there's now a shadow. The light's been disrupted. Like you can, you can, the lighting system will measure the beams of light or whatever it is coming out of the fixture. And it will know that there's something moving through there. And it's moving in a way that a human moves. So it knows it's a human or a cat or a dog or whatever. And that this whole, um, Li-Fi thing is really it, like the, 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 it, it, you could have a program that like a, a, a software program that was, wasn't, didn't need anybody to access it. It just knew that you were there and then had some bio mechanism to look at your face and knew who you were. Am I, am I crazy with this conspiracy theory thing? I mean, Dan Ryan looked at me like I was nuts, but then he also leaned back and went, maybe. And same with Randy Reed. Mm -hmm. Is that where we're going? We're going to walk into the matrix? <laughs> I think there's potential of it. And I think that's just an indication of what, what the future of lighting is going to be and how much we don't know about it. It's all speculation. And we're saying, yeah, maybe it could happen. I mean, it's it's got some of those capabilities to it that you've talked about. So I could see it potentially happen in the future. I think there's a huge chance that everything in lighting, in terms of lighting knowledge, gets commoditized. It's like a code. It's like, yes, you have to do this, but this is what matters. What matters is the information you can get. What matters is, is walking through the matrix. What matters is taking the red pill. That's what matters. Take the red pill and then you're in the matrix. You have lighting, Li-Fi everywhere that measures everything. And then here's what we're going to know from that. Here's the, here's the information we're going to get from that. I yep. think that's the future, man. Yeah. That's where the money is. Yeah. That's where the opportunity is. Right. The money, the money is with the guy that can walk into the room and say, not only can you, not only can you, um, get this information, but here's what you're going to do with it. That's what yeah, and, I, and I think. And I think that's a realistic sale for people that are in lighting right now. I mean, we, I, I've done projects where I say, you know, this control can dim it, it can censor it, it can do whatever you want it, but it's up to you to do it with what you want. It has a capability. I'm not going to, you know, to get into the cap or and actually define what you should do. I'll give you suggestions, but it's your light, your facility, your space that has these capabilities. Figure out how you like it. Oof. That's a tough yeah. one, man. I don't know where yeah. that where that where that one ends and where it begins. You know what I mean? Where does it start? A, and where does it stop? I think it's got to be something that's going to be just gradually implemented over time, kind of like all lighting has been. You start off with a technology, and then it advances, and then it has new capabilities. And I think it'll just kind of gradually come over time. I don't think it'll be a a start and a stop where it says now you sell this way. You know, it's just like LED. Like for how many years were you selling LED and fluorescent? For two years, I was quoting LED versus fluorescent, right? 2013, 14, 15, you go into a facility and you say, well, you can buy this fluorescent or this LED. And then they start transitioning. And then all of a sudden the rebates are better for LED and the cost comes down. Now people are starting to buy LED. I think it'll just be just like that. Expand over time. 
just be a slow transition, eh? Slow. By the time this all ends, I'll be 100% bald, and it'll all be white. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>